Malaysia and China City volunteers continue to care for family members of the missing Malaysia plane. We learn how early city hospitals, morning clinics and home visits benefits local residents. Welcome to Dire Headlines, I'm Wendy Chen, thank you for joining us. First up in Malaysia, among the passengers on board the missing flight MH370 were the cousins of Indonesia city volunteer Rukiat. Recently, volunteers accompanied Rukiat's cousin-in-law, Rana Wati, who arrived in Kuala Lumpur for further news to a nearby Catholic church to pray. But first, let's go to the Everly Hotel where volunteers have been on, a, on site 24 hours a day, providing comfort and support to family members. Members. Behind me is the Everland Hotel. This is where the family members of the missing passengers of the Malaysian plane are currently staying. Tzuji was the first organization to arrive. Tzuji Foundation has set up a 24-hour information center to help family members. I asked a volunteer if he was willing to give me five minutes of his time for an interview. However, he told me he can only give me a minute interview. He has too much work to do. I have been here for more than 48 hours and I only went home for a short time. Other city volunteers came to cover my shift. I am physically tired but mentally I can still handle it. All of us hope we can receive information as to the whereabouts of the plan as soon as possible. We hope to provide the family members with comfort and support during this time. This time, more than a hundred volunteers were mobilized to help. Some volunteers even took days off from work to contribute. This morning, I received a call from Siji Foundation. So I came here as soon as I finished signing some documents at work. I think it is important for us to seize the chance to do good deeds. My boss will respect my decision. Crying her heart out, this is Rana Wati, whose husband and brother-in-law were on board the missing flight MH370. To wait for further updates, Rana Wati and her relatives flew from Indonesia to Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur and is currently staying at a hotel room provided by Malaysia Airlines. We hope to have a place where we can pray for blessings and hope. Although Islam is the state religion of Malaysia, knowing that this family are devoted Catholics, on the next day, city volunteers and staff members of Malaysia Airlines accompany Rana Wati and her family members to a nearby Catholic church. Standing in front of the statue of Virgin Mary, Rana Wati tells us her wish. I hope they can find the missing plane and my husband as soon as possible. A few years ago, my husband encountered a bombing when he was working in Mumbai. Back then, he was living close to the bombing site, and I wasn't sure if he would come home safe or not. I know exactly the feeling Ratnawati is going through right now. Knowing what these family members are going through, volunteers promise to offer them comfort and support as they face this tragedy in the days ahead. And at the end of the visit, Ranawati asked the volunteers to take a family picture of her and her husband's photo. However, instead of smiles, this photo is filled with sorrow. While some volunteers wait for updates in Malaysia's Kuala Lumpur, for the family members waiting at the Metro Park Lidu Hotel in Beijing, China, city volunteers have also remained by their side, extending emotional support and care whenever needed, and their selfless gestures have caught the attention of the international media. The first group of family members of passengers of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 and China city volunteers arrived in Kuala Lumpur on March 11th. 
Li Pong's wife was among the group and was quickly taken by volunteers to see her husband. Since the incident, Tsuji volunteers have remained by the family side to lend emotional assistance and comfort. I felt a sense of comfort just with the volunteers by my side. They didn't have to say anything, and I already felt more calm. Li Pong and his brother both make a living in Malaysia. With his brother's whereabouts unknown, Li has never felt so helpless. United with his wife again, they both want to say, That's what we hope too. I hope all of us can go back together. Thank you for care. We also receive immense support from staff members of Malaysia Airlines. Lee's heart can finally find some comfort knowing that he is no longer alone. Family members await anxiously for any news of the missing plane. Days of emotional turmoil and distress have made most weary and drained. She broke down in tears. Her sister, too. Her sister-in-law was carsick, so she is very weak now and hasn't eaten in two days. Not being able to eat or sleep, the woman's body finally gave out and she was rushed to the infirmary. We can only try to persuade her to eat something and drink more water, but she didn't want to. She wanted to stay here and wait for more news. With each day that passes, they're getting more frustrated and anxious. The Tsuji face cream is our smile. We hope to bring family members some solace. Tsuji volunteers kneel on the ground as they console relatives of passengers on board the missing Malaysia airline flight. They can feel their sorrow and see the anxiety written on the faces of the family members. Family members are desperate for answers and may say things out of frustration. It may seem that we have been wronged, but we don't see it that way. We are just carrying out our duties. One of the family members told me that he doesn't know what to tell his child and how to break the news to his elders since they have heart problems. So we took him to the psychiatrist to get some advice. The Li Du Hotel is filled with desperate families awaiting news of their loved ones. By their side are the blue and white clad volunteers, whose selfless support has also caught the attention of international media. And through their lenses, this power of compassion will be able to spread one step further. As family members of those on the missing Malaysia Airlines flight continue to wait for news of their loved ones, the former Prime Minister of Malaysia, Mahathir Mohamed, and his wife visited the hotels at which the family members are staying, bringing with them a bit of encouragement and support in times of despair. The former Prime Minister of Malaysia for 22 years, Mahathir Mohamed, and his wife are visiting the family members of the missing passengers. As family members speak of their loved ones, city volunteers, like always, lend a listening ear and provide comfort. Over the past few days, volunteers have surrounded these grieving families with their love and warmth. The volunteers are a great help because they have assisted us in many areas. Coming here, we had no idea what to do, especially at a time like this when we are really lost and feeling hopeless. It is their companionship and advice that settles our hearts. Before we are given any answers, we should settle our minds. On the other side of the room, five volunteers are accompanying a senior couple whose son was on board the missing plane. The volunteers take care of us and are very caring. I am pleased to have them around. Though the last few days have been difficult and almost unbearable at times, the company and support of city volunteers have helped make things a bit easier. Also in Malaysia, students and teachers at the Penang City Academy and Johor Bahru City Kindergarten, as well as staff members and visitors of the Johor Bahru Jingzi Books and Cafe, all took a moment to pray for the safe return of the passengers on board the missing plane. The whereabouts of Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 is still unknown. Each picture drawn by the children depicts their hope for the passengers aboard the plane. A plane can go that way, and then a helicopter goes that way. A ship can be over there, and a submarine over there. 
哦，这都比较可以快找到，对吗？呃、啊，这个是什么字来的？这个？我讲找他了。Go find me. The incident has inspired over 10 countries to put away their differences and join efforts to search for the plane. And through sharing stories of these acts, this love is absorbed and reflected in the children. The child that drew this picture says, I drew many airplanes and I hope these airplanes can quickly and safely return home. Incorporating the latest news into their lessons, city teachers ask their students to put themselves in another's shoes. If one day you were waiting for your parents to return home and they didn't come home, would you be sad? Hoping to hear some good news about the passengers on board the missing plane, at Johor Bahru Stingsi Books and Cafe, staff, volunteers, and members of the public gathered to pray. No matter what happens, we need to keep moving forward. In facing obstacles in life, we need to approach life with positivity. I hope everyone can work towards filling this world with peace and love. Life is impermanent. Some people were not supposed to be on this flight, but then they were. Others who were originally on the flight changed their plans. I really wish for a miracle and hope everyone is safe. Taking a moment to pray and gather a positive force, the 206 students and teachers of Penang City Academy hope for the safe return of all passengers aboard MH370. As this year marks the 15th year of establishment of the Elite City Hospital, today we take a look at several of the hospital's programs through which doctors are doing their best to safeguard the health of residents on Taiwan's east coast. At 6 in the morning, when most of the world is still sleeping, Elite City Hospital has already opened its doors to the public. 当谷物存的这个浓度越高的时候，血管呢、啊、就容易越来越狭窄。Following the move to its new location in 2003, the Yuli City Hospital started what was to be Taiwan's earliest clinic. Most residents here have farming duties or jobs to go back to, but with the clinic opening from 6 in the morning, they can take their parents for a checkup and still be back in time for work. Over the past 10 years, the morning clinic has already treated more than 15,000 patients. After being seen by the doctor, we still have time to go to work or head to the fields. So these clinics really help so many different people. When he started doing these clinics, I came to be seen by him as he's really caring. His presence is a major plus for us here in Yuli. Every morning, the clinic is open to all, and it has allowed the hospital's ER unit to focus on what it does best, which is to save lives. This morning clinic means that those going to the ER will only be those who are in critical condition. So we have the morning clinic to cure sickness and relieve pain, while the ER is there to help save those on the brink of life or death. However, residents of Taiwan's East Coast often face long, expensive drives to see a doctor. Therefore, in February of 2001, the hospital started offering home visitations. Some patients, due to their illness, are unable to leave the house. In those cases, we will pay them a house call. If a follow-up is required at the hospital, we will think of a way to get the patient there. With Yuli Township at its center, 
Doctors would travel as far as Wanrong Township in the north and Fuli Township in the south. For the past 13 years, doctors have ventured out every week to provide medical care to the community completely free of charge. Not only do we not apply for IDS, we also don't apply to the health insurance system for payment. We help the government save a lot of money as we help residents diagnose problems before they become serious. Mr. Wang is the first patient to receive cerebral aneurysm surgery at Yuli Tsuji Hospital. It was nine years ago that Dr. Zhang Yuling saved his life. I want to thank him. Thankfully, he was here to save my life. Dr. Li Senjia, now 76, came to Yuli five years ago to offer his expertise in a region desperately in need of medical resources. Although diagnosed with four-stage lung cancer six months ago, he continues to serve. Although I'm sick, I can't just give up. I'm still very optimistic about everything. Working at the hospital four days a week and doing community outreach on Mondays, Dr. Lee lives his life by putting the needs of others in front of his own. What he is doing is what we read about in the Sutra of innumerable meanings. For example, although the ferryman is sick, he continues to ferry loads that need it across the river. When we are alive, we should offer up our bodies in the service of others, and perhaps even after death as a silent mentor. In our next report, we meet two companies, Interface, a corporate company in the United States, and the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, to see how they have become role models for the reduction of carbon footprints and the use of renewable energy. Fossil fuel usage is down 60% per unit of production due to efficiencies in renewables. Ray Anderson, the former chairman of Interface, a U.S. corporate company which originally relied on fossil fuels for energy and emitted 90 different pollutants each day, decided to turn his enterprise into one that produces zero waste. And thanks to the people of Interface, I have become a recovering plunderer. Since then, profits at Enterprise have doubled, proving that going green is not only good for our planet but for business as well. In Taiwan, similar cases also exist. The grinding machine produces wastewater with different components, which through our wastewater management system is turned into clean water. This system, for example, can save us 42 tons of water per hour. The heat generated by these machines is normally released into the environment. Through this heat recovery machine, we recycle the heat and use it to run the air conditioning system that is needed in our factory. Only by creating less harm to the planet will high energy consumption businesses survive the coming shortages of resources. In fact, in Taiwan, high energy consumption enterprises are already on a steady decline. Here in Taiwan, we can basically no longer expand on industries that have large carbon footprints. What we should be encouraging is businesses that generate no pollution or carbon emissions. Turning a green building into an eco-friendly industrial park is the new trend many companies have picked up over the recent years. 
Businesses should first put an end to any harmful chemical emission, use renewable energy to reduce reliance on fossil fuels, and recycle and reuse wastewater and heat. Finally, an effective transportation system, such as carpooling or smart parking technology, will help reduce petrol consumption. We aim to go from developing green buildings to a green community, and from there, a green city, and finally, a green nation. If the business sector cannot take the initiative to act, the effort of those promoting a greener way of life will be lost. It is only through learning from these green enterprises can we avoid destroying our own future. In Xinzhu, Taiwan, 91-year-old recycling volunteer Zhang Xu Yuan has been practicing recycling for more than 15 years. Impressed by her commitment, the Xinzhu County Mayor presented the senior with a plaque for her hardworking efforts. This is recycling volunteer Zhang Xu Yuan. At the age of 91, Zhang Xu is already a great-grandmother. Living a life free of worries, the senior spends most of her time practicing recycling. People make fun of her and ask me why I let my mother run around in the street at such an old age. It's not like we're struggling to make ends meet. <laughs> After getting a good night's rest, the senior is recharged and heads out the door to collect recyclables. Collecting recyclables from the nearby convenience stores, it is with an appreciation for all Earth's resources that motivates Grandma Zhang Xu to carry on. Yes, she's in great shape and in good spirit. She keeps herself busy to pass the time. Seeing the senior practicing recycling to safeguard our planet on Dai TV, the Xinzhu County Mayor had a plaque made to commend the senior for her efforts. Not only was it an honor for Grandma Zhang Xu, it was also an acknowledgement of the efforts of all recycling volunteers. At this year's Clean Up Australia Day, with the campaign especially focused on the removal of all cigarette butts off the street, Sydney City volunteers took the trouble to ensure no corner was neglected. Let's take a look. The annual Clean Up Australia Day is an event city volunteers never miss. From the pavement to the stairs and even the pond, volunteers make an effort to clean every corner. This year, volunteers focused on collecting cigarette butts, as many forest fires last year were caused by carelessly discarded cigarettes. As cigarette ends tend to fall between cracks in the pavement, volunteers had a hard time picking it up, but even the wet weather did not stop them in their tracks. Cigarette butts contain a lot of toxic chemicals, which is detrimental to our environment. So this year, the local government asked us to focus specifically on removing cigarette ends. City volunteers' efforts garnered praise from many passers-by. Volunteers then took the opportunity to promote city's environmental ideals. Do a fantastic job and it's also very good because they influence a lot of the local community which is fantastic. This annual event not only inspires communities to clean up their streets but also gives everyone a chance to conserve and safeguard our environment. We're going to China at the end of today's show as construction work has begun for the second Jingzi Hall in the nation located in Dongguan of Guangdong province. City volunteers have been mobilized each day to prepare delicious vegetarian meals for construction workers. We'll leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.